Hello, everyone. Welcome back to X-Plane 11. Once again, my name is Jeff Aviano, and we are going to continue flight school. Today, we're doing something fun. We're doing VOR navigation as well as flying an ILS approach. Uh, difficulty 3, difficulty 3 tells you the scores at zero. I haven't done it before uh, is what it's telling us there. Uh, if you want to fly cross country without the benefit of a GPS, you'll need to learn to use VOR navigation. Fly this tutorial to learn how real pilots fly from point A to point B. That is true. And it's untrue at the same time because VORs are slowly being uh, put out of commission. They're an old technology and everything's moving to GPS uh, stuff for the most part. But we'll do VOR navigation. I'm excited about it. I love doing it in the real world. And we have a bunch of green lines. We're ready to start navigating to Juno International. I'm going to fly for a moment to get you oriented. Okay, we'll hit continue. We're flying a 295 radial to the Sisters Island VOR. The VOR transmitter is like the hub of a bike of a wheel. And it sends out 360 radials, the spokes of the wheel, to tell you where you are in relation to the hub. That is true. So if we look um, here, we're pretty much lined up. This is the main instrument we're going to be using, unless he's using the secondary one. I'm not sure for left and right for just the localizer, but um, or for VORs. So that's absolutely true. We have um, it honed in on there. So there's a little... Uh, place out there that is a little facility with all these little spokes around it and, and each one of these are you know different intercepting angles to to get there and it'll make more sense as we go along here but we're ready to go so we're going to follow one of these spokes radials to reach sisters island and then we'll follow another radial away from sisters island to get to juno we're on the 295 radial the spoke coming from the vor transmitter hub at two, heading 295 the hoops in front of us visualize that radial. We're going to be uh, on the outbound radial, which would be the 295. So we're flying in opposite, if that makes sense. I, it's, it's, it's a little uh, more than just what they're throwing up here, but that's okay. If you look to your left, you can see a hoop visualization of the 296 radial. Okay. Likewise, to the right of us is a visualization of the 294 radial. Are they going to kill us? He said he had the airplane. Now we're on the 295 radial, but since the radials are measured as the heading when going away from the VOR, we're instead going toward it. Yeah, that means we're flying a course of 115. This is what I was telling you earlier. Oops. Uh, the inverse heading of 295. Take a look at your course deviation indicator, the CDI. Yes, this is the CDI, and OBS is not something you use to record games with and stream with. OBS is Omni Bearing Selector, and, and you'll, we'll get into that. They're going to kill us, dude. They're going to kill us. The vertical bar here is the lateral horizontal course deviation indicator. The CDI shows where the, our course is in relation to the aircraft itself. Yeah. See, we're to the VOR. Continue. And you'll notice you have to spin the OBS to get it on, on there. I think they might tell us that. Since I've tuned our navigation radio to fly the 295 radial of Sisters Island VOR, and we're right on track for that radial, you can see that the CDI is centered. Yes, it is. But watch what happens when we drift off course. You're going to kill us, dude. You're a dumbass. Oh, he is flying. He's just a terrible, terrible one. Yeah, you're going to notice right here, it's going to start to swing. See how it's swinging? But watch what happens when we drift off course. Yes. You nearly kill us. That's what you do. All right. Yeah, see how that's needle swinging? Do you see the vertical course deviation indicator drifting to the left of center? Yes, we did. It indicates that since we've deviated to the right, we need to adjust our course to the left to re-intercept the radial. If you look out the window, you'll see that the 295 radial is over to our left. Yes, there it is. This agrees with the vertical course deviation indicator. Yep. Let's get back on track. Yeah. How about flying the plane a little bit better than, you know, nose diving at the ocean? The key here is to not overcorrect. We want to turn just a bit. Okay. Thanks for that. If after a few seconds, we don't see the CDI bar moving, we'll deviate further to the left. That's true. You want to do it in small increments. You don't want to make big giant movements. As you can see, the vertical bar is starting to come back toward the center. So we need to turn back to be lined up with the radial. That is true. This cross one doesn't mean anything. That's going to be for glide slope, and that's later on in the ILS. Uh, so we're just worried about this thing swinging back and forth. Okay, at this point, you know all the need to know to fly the VR. Okay, so we're heading to Sisters Island, the side of the VR we're getting guidance from, and from there, go on to Juno International. Just follow the guidance for the course deviation indicator, and we'll reach Sisters Island in no time. They don't tell you any... Okay, they don't tell you altitude to fly or anything. No big deal, man. We'll just climb back up. They screwed us a little bit. All right, so we're going to go like this. 
remember it's a small deviation imagine where those green lines were before and we're watching this needle swing back over once it does we could turn back to that heading that we had previously selected so what i like to do is about a five degree uh intercept uh whenever you're this close on the mark and then wait for it to center once it centers we'll make that right turn five degrees and we'll be back on the 115 which is the 295 uh, inbound radial to the uh the bor a little bit more there we go it's centered pretty good there so we can just turn right just a little bit here there we go okay this tutorial is just kind of screwing you note that as you get closer to vr the radials will get closer together so smaller changes to your course will produce bigger changes on the course deviation indicator that is true what we call about this what we would call this in the real world is needle sensitivity the closer we get to the station the more wildly sensitive this gets and as you actually get really close to the station you shouldn't even be trying to chase it anymore you should just fly your heading and you'll be good to go i'm gonna try to get back up to altitude here that they screwed us on because i don't know what the hell they were doing i don't think they did he lost so much altitude on that one. I don't know what it was about. Looking good right now. He's going to keep climbing up. There's no deviation of the needle. We're just flying our, our course and heading. Now, keep in mind, you know, if we had, you know, winds to deal with, if we had winds pushing us to the right, we would have to crab the airplane to the left and point it left so it would track the center line towards the VOR pretty interesting uh, i think they might have some winds aloft in here doing exactly that so let's get reacquainted on that like that there we go a little bit more to the left get that needle centered looking good we're getting very close to it so remember it's going to get a little bit more sensitive so right now as we get closer to it we're not too many miles out of it uh, all right looking good bring that nose down a little bit more i don't know what i've noticed in the uh x-plane 11 beta is these instruments in particular get some really weird anomalies i don't understand what that's all about but it's it looks like snow from a you know old tv static i don't know why they do that but they do Remember, as we get closer to Sisters Island VOR, it's going to uh, it's going to get more and more and more sensitive. And there it goes all the way to the right. We keep flying. Okay, so yes, we're over the Sisters Island VOR. Remember, this is like being at the hub of a bike wheel. That is true. Hopefully, I can move over and show you what the VOR looks like. Uh, can we go outside and look at it? Maybe. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I don't know if they actually have them modeled in there, but there's Sisters Island. There's the VOR right there. You see a little guy down there? Yes, maybe no. Um, yeah, there it is, right there under the oh, right over the wheel. There it is. This is the one that they're talking about here. So we're over the Sisters Island VOR. Remember, this is like being at the hub of a bike wheel, as you can see there. And the different spokes out there are those different radials to this just navig, you know, this little beacon out here that's given us that that course. So pretty pretty interesting. That's what it looks like an actual VOR. I, I'm happy that they actually did model those because. Most FSX uh, always had that. Okay, we're over Sisters Island VOR. Okay, yes, we know. We're now going to fly the 035 radial out of the hub. Start flying away from the hub for a bit, then watch your CDI closely. That is true. So they're going to want 035. Hopefully, I don't think they're going to set this. We'll have to do it ourselves, I would imagine. So let's see. The needle starts to move. Turn to head heading 035. Then begin correcting your heading to center the CDI again. Now, are they talking about the outbound course or the inbound? Because that gets really confusing. Um, remember, we're inbound of the 295, and when they want us to fly at 035 over here, we're going to have to make a left turn, and uh, we're basically going to uh, wait a little bit longer after we cross over the VOR. You can see, as of right now, the nav is showing the little flag. We're still to the VOR because you saw physically we haven't crossed over it, even though X-Plane 10 says, hey, we're over Sisters Island. You're not really because you can see that right there we're not. And after we cross it, this little flag is going to go from this, which says to, is going to say from. So that's what's going to change. The needle starts to move. Turn to heading 035 and begin correcting your heading. Okay. When, they say. So we're going to wait for that little flag to flip, which it should very soon because we were very close to the VOR, as you saw. 
And when we're traveling at the speed we are of 95 knots, it doesn't take long for that to happen. Just about over it now. Wait for that flag to flip. Well, actually, he changed the OBS. See, he's not telling you what he's doing with the OBS. He changed it on us. So he put it on a 035. There's the flip right there. So now we're from it. And there's the needle swinging. We're going to wait a little bit so it's not too, you know, too difficult to capture it. So we'll fly over it just a little bit. And then we'll start our turn to heading 035. So let's go to 035 on our heading so we remember it. And let's start our turn to the left. And you'll see how this works. I'm just going to do a standard turn layer, about 20 degree of uh, bank here. And remember, when you start banking the airplane left and right, you will lose altitude because we're losing the lift. All right. So 035 would be this. So if we want to intercept of 035, we'll just do like a 10 degree heading uh, left of it. So we'll do 025 instead. So there's 025 about right there. And we're just going to fly like this. And what's going to happen is this needle is going to start swinging to the right. And remember, we want to wait for it to get closer to the center. And we start our turn to the right and fly that 035 outbound radial of the Sisters Island VOR. Hopefully this makes sense and it's not too complicated. Let's stay on this one right here. Now in uh, bigger airplanes, you'll have thing called uh, DMI. DME. And that's distance measuring equipment. Most VORs have distance measuring equipment on it, and it will tell you how many miles away you are from and to the VOR, which is pretty cool. And we know Sisters Island VOR is right there, so we need to cross its path this way before we're going to get that needle swinging. So I'm going to actually make a little bit more of a turn to the left so we can be a little more abrupt. 115 will work. About right there. I'm happy with that. Well, uh, there's the needle starting to swing. See? So what you can do is I'm going to wait for it to get like about in the middle there. And then I'm going to start a nice turn to the right. Very, very shallow five degree turn to the right. And we'll intercept that. There we go. About right there. Nice little five degree turn. We're moving with the needle. You don't want to move too abrupt because we turn sharp. We're not, it's not going to be enough. See? So I'll uh, shallow it out a little bit and we're back on our 10 degree intercept. So now, wait for that needle to line up right on the dots there in the center, and then we can turn to 035 heading. Which we're almost to it. It's acting really stupid, but we're almost to it. There it is, centered and turn right. And we should be right on this spoke, no problem. About right there. I'm going to go fly a little to the right here so we can re-intercept it. It was a little late on in my turn. But that's okay. All right. Let's... Okay, nice flying. They enjoyed it. They liked it. So that's that's the basic rundown of VR. 45%. What? Okay, yeah, sure, whatever. End of training. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about. That, that was the VR one. We didn't do so well in their eyes, but uh, I was trying to explain a little bit more than what they are with VR navigation. Keep in mind that that, DO, that uh, VR navigation is going out of style so they are activating them slowly but surely so it's something to learn it's it's always nice to have another tool you know in your brain whenever you're flying from point a to point b but that'll do it for this one guys i will see you in the next one take care